Hey guys, it's Max from Axtech. Today, we have our hands on the brand new OnePlus 7 Pro. This is OnePlus's most expensive device, but when we look at all of the specs, all of the features, and then we look at the price, it packs a lot of punch for the money. And I was really surprised at how low they priced it. We are gonna be comparing this new device to the S10 Plus and the iPhone XS Max, two of its biggest rivals that cost a lot more money. We're gonna compare a bunch of stuff, including the display quality, the performance, uh, the UI or the snappiness, the cameras. We're gonna look at different specs, the price points, and see which phone is the most worth it for the money. Let's jump right into it and do our signature fast unboxing. And there you go. Let's give you my first impressions. The buttons land in the perfect place for my hand. So over here, I have your little physical switch. So you can silence the phone or put it into vibrate mode and you can customize that. The power button is right here as well. So I can literally press down or change my settings. And on the other side, I have the volume rocker where my index finger is. It's a little bit hard to press, but everything lands perfectly and we don't have any Bixby button or anything like that. Even though the S10 Plus is a smaller device, it's not as tall. As you can see, the power button is way up high and I literally have to shift my grip of the phone to reach it. Whereas with the OnePlus, I don't have to do that at all. It's perfect. And then with the iPhone, let's hold it in. There you go, perfect, right where my finger is. Same thing with the volume rocker, and then I can access that physical switch. As far as size, the S10 Plus is slightly taller than the XS Max, but the XS Max is slightly wider. When we add in the new OnePlus 7 Pro, it is definitely the tallest, and it's probably very similar to the XS Max as far as width, maybe slightly wider, actually. Comparing the backs of the phones, they all look very nice, very premium, they're all using glass. Uh, but surprisingly, the OnePlus got away with just having the OnePlus logo on there, uh, the name, and then the IMEI number. Instead of having a bunch of serial numbers, a uh, little recycling logo, all that stuff that Samsung has on it, really takes away from kind of the clean look where Apple literally just has the Apple logo and iPhone. The OnePlus definitely reminds me of an iPhone style of design, especially with the way the camera is set up. Both the S10 Plus and the OnePlus 7 Pro have triple cameras, whereas the iPhone just has a dual camera. Both the XS Max and S10 Plus have front-facing cameras. We have a notch on the iPhone, a cutout with the S10 Plus, but the OnePlus 7 Pro has neither of those. I know the screen's not on yet, but we're gonna cover cameras just a little bit later. And the S10 Plus is the only phone out of the bunch that still retains a headphone jack. The iPhone comes with a five watt charger out of the box, very slow, and if you wanna get fast charging, you have to buy a special cable and a power delivery charger. The S10 Plus comes with a 15 watt quick charger included in the box, but the Snapdragon version does not support USB-C power delivery, whereas the OnePlus 7 Pro comes comes with OnePlus's proprietary warp charging, which is a 30 watt charger. It can charge the huge battery in this phone uh, to 50% in just 20 minutes. It's very fast, very efficient, doesn't heat up the phone very much, but unfortunately, if you're not using this proprietary charger with OnePlus's special cable or their car charger, you're not gonna get that speed and it will only charge at seven watts no matter what you plug it in. So you have to make sure if you want fast charging, anything above seven watts that you keep this on hand. All right, so here we are at the home screen of the OnePlus 7 and I have to say it is nice not having any notches or any cutouts. Just a little bit ago, we were praising the cutouts compared to Apple's uh, notch that it has or other Android notches. But of course, if we have a full display without anything there, it is really nice to look at. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not a huge fan of curved screen edges, and that had me kind of disappointed when I saw that OnePlus switch to this kind of a design. But holding it in my hand and just looking at the device, I really can't tell that it's curved. I mean, maybe slightly if I try to look for it compared to the Samsung where it has a much steeper curve angle and it just is actually curved right at the edge where the OnePlus starts out a little bit earlier and it has a smoother kind of curve. So I'm glad they went that route. Now, as far as bezels, the XS Max has an even bezel all around, but at the bottom, it is the thinnest. Then goes the OnePlus 7 and the S10 Plus is slightly thicker. Looking at the sides, the S10 Plus is the thinnest and then going the other direction. And then at the top, uh, the OnePlus actually has the thinnest or smallest bezel. Now let's talk about that 90 Hertz display refresh rate. All these phones use OLED displays and typically OLEDs are stuck at about 60, but this is the first phone to have an OLED at 90 Hertz. And I could definitely tell from the very get-go during the setup process. 
just having that extra refresh rate makes everything super smooth. I'm not seeing like motion blur. If you're used to like an iPad Pro, if you've seen that, or like a gaming monitor, you know what I'm talking about. And along with the display resolution and OnePlus's really fast animations, it makes this thing super snappy. I mean, they were snappy before, but this just adds like another level to it. Check out this 120 frames per second comparison. I think this is the only way I can actually relay the difference in smoothness by showing you guys this clip slow down. Comment below and let me know what you think if you could tell a difference in this comparison. Now underneath that 90Hz screen, we have that fingerprint sensor just like with the S10 Plus. With the iPhone, we have Face ID. Let's go ahead and compare the speeds. Okay, that's not terrible on the S10 Plus. Definitely faster than when it came out. Uh, Samsung, I think, made it a little bit quicker. The OnePlus uses an optical scanner, and one interesting thing is if the screen is off, it will not read your fingerprint. The screen has to be turned on. So you have to either press on the side and down, double tap, and then down, or if you lift up your phone, or if you flip it, or if you pull it out of your pocket, it actually lights up the screen, and then you can kind of press down. So as you guys can see, that is crazy fast. Now let's take a look at the cameras. This is the best camera package that OnePlus has ever put into their phones. OnePlus has usually kind of suffered in this area, but they're making big strides. And the biggest thing that I want to take a look at is the front facing selfie camera that is now motorized to give us that beautiful display without any cutouts or notches. Let's flip it up and there you go. That is very, very cool, very futuristic. I'm gonna take a selfie and uh, you guys let us know which one looks the best in the side-by-side -side comparison. Now OnePlus, if you guys get that pun, does not have any beauty filters enabled like the Samsung does out of the box, so that is very nice. And if we take a look at the back, we also have triple cameras just like the S10 Plus. And we're gonna be doing a separate video getting into that because there's so much to cover. We have night modes, we have you know really good dynamic range with the HDR phone, Photos, we have video. Make sure you guys are subscribed to see that detailed camera comparison. Now let's go ahead and compare the display qualities. All of these phones use OLED displays. The OnePlus actually has the highest resolution, but it's also the largest. And because of that, the pixel per inch is really, really close to the S10 Plus, and the iPhone actually falls behind just a little bit in terms of pixel per inch. So at this point, with all adaptive and auto brightness shut off, with True Tone shut off, the iPhone is the brightest, followed by the OnePlus, and the S10 Plus is just slightly behind the OnePlus. And uh, another weird thing is that the OnePlus is actually more contrasty and has more saturation uh, compared to the Samsung. And that's with the natural settings that I selected. Samsung usually has a bunch of pop in its colors and I think they've toned that down just a little bit, but all the phones look fantastic. I have a 4K60 HDR video opened up here on all three phones. The brightnesses are maxed out and we're gonna compare the image quality and the quality of the HDR. Let's go ahead and start playing this. And right off the bat, I'm noticing something that is very, very interesting. As far as watching HDR videos, the Samsung is definitely in the lead. It not only has a ton of detail, the darks are very dark, lots of contrast. The brights are ultra bright. They really, really pop. The colors are great. Uh, the iPhone is definitely behind. Not as much contrast, not as much colors. The brights are definitely not as bright. And the S7 Plus is in last place. Uh, the brights are brought down really, really low. Um, it just doesn't look as good. The whole image looks really dark, even though I do have the brightness all the way turned up. So I'm really hoping that this is gonna get fixed in the future. It seems like maybe it's just not reading the HDR video file properly. I'm crossing my fingers because other than watching this, everything else looks great. But here, everything is just really dark and really flat. So now that we watched some video, let's do a speaker comparison. I'm very excited to test out how the OnePlus 7 Pro does. This has always been a weak point for the OnePlus devices. We're gonna start out with the 10S Max, then jump to the S10 Plus, and then the OnePlus.
Okay, so in my opinion, just looking straight at the device without doing any sort of cupping, uh, the 7 Pro is not as loud as the iPhone, and it's missing some of the high notes, the crisp little uh, high notes that the S10 has that I really like about the S10. Now, it is personal preference. I like very sharp highs, and this seems like it's just kind of muted. It seems like it's a little bit quieter than the iPhone as well, and the iPhone is quieter and has less of the high end and kind of the mids compared to the S10 S Plus. So, as far as speakers, it's definitely not bad. It's a huge step up from the single speaker from the 6T and a lot of other Android phones. So it's not a bad dual stereo speaker system, but it definitely doesn't compete with the S10 Plus. So I'm running N22 so we can compare the performance of these devices. And I am very shocked with the volume when this video is playing. It's much louder than it was in YouTube. So I don't know if there's any compatibility issues with the YouTube app because the HDR didn't look correct and the sound wasn't very loud. I was just expecting that just to be the speakers. But in Antutu, it is much louder and very loud for a smartphone. So I will be looking into this more and I'll cover it in my full review. The Antutu results are in and the winner is the OnePlus 7 Pro. Both the overall score, if we look at every individual category, it actually wins out other than graphics where it's basically the same as the S10 Plus. Of course, these do have the same processors. The OnePlus 7 Pro and the Samsung S10 Plus have almost identical scores because they have the same processors. They both have eight gigabytes of RAM. It is very, very close here. The iPhone actually has a slightly higher multi-core score, but about 35 to 40% higher single core score. And that leads us to kind of our conclusion. If we look at all the features, we look at the performance, we look at the specs, the OnePlus 7 really delivers. That fingerprint scanner is super fast. The performance is great. The display is really nice. The speakers sound good. I'm not sure what's going on with YouTube, but we will figure that out. And the price tag comes in at $700 for this model. 256 gigabytes of storage, eight gigs of RAM, top of line processor, very nice display. If we look at the S10 Plus, that is $1,000 with 128 gigabytes of storage. And if you want more, you have to jump all the way up to 512. Whereas the iPhone for $1,100, you get four gigs of RAM, which it still does a good job with. And then you get 64 gigabytes of storage and you have to spend 1250 if you wanna go up to 256. $700 or 1250 for the same amount of storage. Now there are some downsides. We do not have wireless charging. You can get super fast charging, but you have to use the proprietary cable. We don't have an IP waterproofing rating, but a couple of videos on YouTube have shown that it definitely is water resistant. And the choice is kind of up to you guys. Do you want to have a name brand flagship with maybe a couple extras, or do you want the OnePlus 7 Pro, which is more expensive than any other OnePlus device, but now it basically is a flagship killer all the way around. Let us know which one would be your choice down in the comments section below. If you guys wanna see more videos like this one, click that little circle above. I will be switching to OnePlus 7 and then doing a full review, so you guys don't wanna miss out that, so enable those notifications. If you guys wanna see more videos, we have a couple right over here. This has been Max with Max Tech, and I'll see you in the next video.